Right then, in we tear. Now, it's got a basic layer of uh, wrapping paper on here at the moment, but the uh, products in question, they've got a pretty sturdy bit of box around them, so I'm not too fussed. That's no sort of a slight on UN Company's packaging department. Like Christmas Day, almost, except with you know, probably less presents, depending on how many presents you tend to get on Christmas Day. I'm going to get that much anymore. I earn my own money, so yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's the bad thing about growing up in a way. But then I, know, I, I can then buy what I want when I want instead of having to wait for pocket money, I suppose. But yeah. One great big box that says King Arms on it. So I imagine most of you can take a rough guess at what sort of things in it. Um, got a very good deal on this thing at the company. They were having a sale on. Um, and this particular item only cost me, in the end, $218 before shipping. And bearing in mind, for some of the sort of larger, sort of less common types of uh, M4 uh, or AK even, um, some Chinese you know, ACM guns can cost you almost as much as that. The, uh, the ANK SR25K I've seen for in the region of sort of 180 ish dollars. This is very not much more, and it's by a much more reputable company. You know, Chinese guns, they're, they're good value for money if you get a good one, certainly sort of uh, Saima, Sima, what do you say, Jingong, um, ANK, they make good, some good stuff, but you, you're taking a little bit of a risk because they're going to have a fairly high lemon rate, um, as some people say. So, yeah, fucking. Um, I don't know, but this packaging I like, we've got plenty of. Uh, well, UNCO seem to put it upside down because here's the shaped bit on the top. I'm not sure why they've done that. Who knows? Uh, but everything's looking good in here. One times Kalashnikov. Um, now, this, according to King Arms, they've called it the AK 74M. Um, I'm no AK expert. I believe this is close to the AK 74 and the 47. Um, I know some people you can tell by these little dimples here or whether they're over here and the gas tube and various other bits like that but like I say I'm really, I'm really, really not an expert. Um, but yeah it's got here in one piece, absolutely no, no damage that I can see so yeah that's a, that's a winner on that front. Um, looking good, very first impressions, good heft not too light or too heavy, quite happy with that. Plastic, a little bit wobbly. Um, hang guard there, the top, the uh, gas tube cover part. That's pretty wobbly. Um, hang guard, fairly sturdy. Stock, very tiny little bit of wobble. It's not really going too far. Um, top cover, that's actually very solid. Those can quite often be very loose on a lot of AK. Cock and handle, yeah, so it doesn't exactly sound exactly mean or impressive, but yeah, yeah, no, no worries. Selector, a little bit, a little bit tricky to stop it just in the full auto position. It tends to slide past full auto straight to straight to semi, but. Um, we can live with that. I'll be changing this fire selector anyway later on. And the other thing I bought, which is part of this, which uh, UNCO just stuck in a box to save any issues. This is a Seema, Seima, whatever you call it. I'm going to call it Seima in the future. I don't know what everyone else does, but that's what I'm going to go with. This is a top rail mount, scope mount, uh, attached to a side rail on AK, so you can put 
put some nice optics on the top of your Kalashnikov. Now, as some of you may notice, the normal position for the side rail on an AK is about there, and this doesn't feature one. Um, however, I've got another order on the way from WGC shop, and that will have a side rail, and I will be putting some work in to get that attached, get that scope rail on there. Um, now, because my knee is absolutely killing me down here, my legs are in some serious pain, I'm going to move these around a bit. Right, so after standing up and getting changed out of my uniform, I'm now about a million times more comfortable than I was before. Um, and I pulled out the, uh, the gun itself, and I've also grabbed all the other bits out of it. So we'll have it came in the box. I'm quickly going in. Um, first off, standard gun with any gun, magazine, metal, high cap mag. These hold about 600 rounds. I'm not planning on using it, but it seems to be decent enough quality metal. If you were a... What the hell was that? I'm going to retract my statement about decent quality because something just fell out. I don't know what. Ah. It's just a nice bit of packaging. That's fine, the magazine's still fine. Yep. Um, for, for a new player of this sport, when you've not got any other magazines yet, that'll do you nicely. You could go into a game, depending on the site you play, you could go into a game just with that, and that'll, and that'll do you all right. So yeah, all fine on that front. Um, the bit I'm quite pleased with, two of it, comes with a structure manual, nice quite large colour printed, which is a change, um, nice shiny paper, and uh, just about, it's a generic manual for the entire King Arms AK line, they do a few safety instructions, the usual stuff, sort of basic sort of parts diagram, what the uh, fire selector positions mean, how to install the battery, adjusting the hop, installing the magazine, and quite possibly one of the most important parts of the manual that's well, quite a vital on occasion, illustrated parts diagram breakdown to right the way down to uh, component parts of the entire rifle. And, that uh, and inside that was a was a pamphlet specific to this uh, exact model, the AK74M. Um, basically, soliciting a few characteristics about it and detailing again how to install the battery. Which is all good. Oh, oh I forgot this bit. So we've got QC passed stamped on there, another number there, 0007. I'm not sure what that means, but someone you can see that's ink, someone's actually stamped on there, so that's good to know. Um, but my favourite part is this little tag that came in here. Let's look on the back. We'll see. It's a little QC uh, tag of the quality process it's been through, quality checking. Um, it's got the product code on there, the average velocity it was doing, so someone's put some BBs through this before they put it in the box and sent it out. And it's got down, it's doing between 106 and 110 meters per second, which is what it should be doing. be around 330 FPS, I would think. Uh, the name of the guy who tested it, uh, the serial number of the gun, the weight of BBs it was used, in this case he's tick point two, which is all good. Uh, it's not used gas, so and that the gas or temperature isn't relevant. And the the, uh, the date that the testing was done. Now that I like. I've not had that in any gun before. I've not had that from TM or GMP or any of those companies. So that's quite nice. That's reassuring to get. UN company. Very kind of me. Sent me a nice pen. That's awesome. WGC are doing calendars at the moment. I mean, uh, any order you make, you have a free uh, flip calendar. So, you know, make sure you get in there. I'll, I'll be adding these to my collection of my e hobby Asia pen and some other stuff I've got. Oh, yeah, and some UN company. Not sure if you can see that. Yeah. Post it notes. Awesome. Uh, like I mentioned before, this, this is the Sima side rail mount, scope mount that I ordered with it probably go into that a little bit later on but yeah for a Chinese product that's looking fine 
they've thrown it in the box, which is with the gun, which is what I was expecting to do, to be honest. It makes more sense than trying to attach it on the outside. Plus, the gun came in a massive load of squidgy foam packaging, which will protect anything in there very nicely. So, that's the gun itself. I'll try not to bring all the packaging paper with me. Like I said, this isn't exactly going to be a review, I'm not going to be shooting this or anything like that. Um, but King Arms are a company that I think makes some interesting AEG, some interesting airsoft related products. So I'm going to go through a little bit about the gun. This is only the second King Arms gun I've ever bought. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm quite intrigued by the company because they, they are a bit original. This isn't exactly an original gun, um, but some of the other stuff they do is good. And this particular one has it's got a lot coming for it. There's going to be a lot of changes made to this particular Kalashnikov. Um, so we'll start at the back end and just do a little overview of the externals. Metal butt pad on there. The battery goes inside the stock at the moment. Nice sort of contoured end. Held on there solid. That's all good. Stock. The plastic on this isn't too bad. I tend to notice the King Arms plastic they use isn't always that great. But this has got a nice sort of rough and texture to it. The mould lines aren't too uh, prevalent, they don't stick out too much which is nice. Got a sling hook there. It's fixed on fairly solidly but there's a bit of wobble already but I'm going to be replacing this looking long term so not too massively fussed about that. Pistol grip, no wobble on there. Quite comfortable to hold. Trigger guard, solid. Magazine catch, does what it should. I tested that a minute ago. Top cover, it's on there solidly, comes off, I'll leave that off for now, I don't. Um, you can see the gearbox there, wiring is looking quite good from what I can see so far. Hot unit adjustment, just behind the fake bolt cover there. Fire selector, it's wearing the paint off a bit already, which is a little bit worrying. Um, but then I suppose with Maker you kind of want that worn look, well most people do anyway, so there's possibly an advantage that the paint isn't that great in a weird and twisted way. Moving forward then, we've got the rear sight, does the usual sliding back and forth as if you're ever going to be shooting someone 900 metres or 1000 metres away, but maybe in yards, I'm not certain, someone, can, someone wants to comment on that and tell me what the unit of measurement is on the numbers on the rear side there, that would be fantastic. Uh, but yeah, that works as it should. The trunnion block there, solid, no wobbles. The actual overall metal quality of the receiver uh, and the top cover as well, quite good. It's not, it's not flexing, it's quite thick actually. Uh, so the, the markings are nice and deep, you got all the sort of fake rivets and bolt holes and all that stuff in there, that looks very nice. Um, hand guards, this is my first slight disappointment on the external side. This plastic is, and this is a trend I've noticed with um, well, with the King Arms guns I've handled, I only own one other one which is the tactical, the foul tactical carbine, um, and the stock and the hand guards, the plastic on that is not great. I think, I think it's going to hold up to some knocks, I don't think you're going to find this shattering, I don't think it's too bad, but there's a mould line that's quite and you can feel that definitely in your hand, uh, so it sticks out quite a lot. Hang, lower hand guard, it's a bit of a wobble to it, and like I mentioned earlier, the top cover there, gas block, gas tubing, um, that's fairly loose. Does it come off like a real thing? I can't do it. It's possibly because it's new. I don't need some tools. I'm not sure on that front. Find out later. Another sling point there. The barrel, the outer barrel, yeah, that's not going, not really going anywhere in relation to the receiver. Got your yeah, fake cleaning rod under there, I don't think that comes out. Or does it? No. No, yeah, I think it does. But it's going to take some force, so I'm not going to try and do it just now. Front sight, solid on there. Gas blocks on there, pretty good. Flash hider, a bit wobbly. Metal seems decent though. So yeah, trigger, 
it's got that sort of spongy, agey feel you're all used to, so that's about standard. Select is all good. Um, so yeah, it's the $218, not a bad deal in my book. Um,